The Commonwealth versus Lizzie Borden. A dramatic reading of the full trial transcript. Day 3, Part 3, Wednesday, June 7, 1893, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Chief Justice Mason and Justices Blodgett and Dewey presided. The state was represented by Honorable Hosea M. Knowlton, District Attorney for the Southern District, and William H. Moody, Esquire, District Attorney for the Eastern District. The defendant, Miss Borden, was represented by Honorable George D. Robinson, Honorable Andrew J. Jennings, and Melvin O. Adams, Esquire. <coughs> Afternoon Session the court returns at quarter past two following the lunch recess. If your honors please, Mrs. Kelly, a witness who testifies to a single fact or incident, was not present this morning. She came on the noon train. She is the mother of a young child, and it was very much to her convenience, she said, if she could be called and then excused. My learned friends are willing that the examination of Miss Sullivan be interrupted for that purpose. The prosecution calls its next witness, Carolyn Kelly. Mrs. Kelly is sworn in and takes the witness stand. Direct examination of the witness by William H. Moody of the prosecution. Your name is Caroline Kelly? Yes, sir. You are married, I believe? Yes, sir. The wife of Dr. Kelly of Fall River? Yes, sir. You live in the next house to the south of the Borden house? Yes. And you lived there, did you, on August 4th of last year? Yes, sir. Were you home on August 4th? Yes. Do you remember what sort of day it was, whether it was warm or cold? Very warm day. Was it a pleasant day? Yes. At that time, had you been about the house during the morning up to the time you left it? Yes. Attending your ordinary household duties, I suppose? Yes. Had you an engagement to go to town that morning? Yes. To the dentists? To a dentist's. Did you start and go downtown? Yes. Did you consult any timepiece before you started? Yes. What timepiece was it? Kitchen clock. After you consulted the kitchen clock, did you remain about the house any before you went out? No, I went right out. You went directly out? Yes. And from your yard, did you go out into the street, into Second Street? Yes. Now what time did your kitchen clock show? About 28 minutes of 11. What sort of clock was that? An old-fashioned clock. Wooden clock? Square, wooden clock with weights. How long had you had it? It's been in the family for years. I've only had it for two years in my house. At that time in August of last year, what sort of timekeeper was it? Not a good one. Was it a timekeeper you could depend on for an accurate time? No, no, sir. Since then, has anything happened to that clock? It does not run at all. I do not see how this is material. Which side of the house did you go from to the street? The side between Mr. Borden's house and yours, or the south side of yours? The west. It faces the west. I went west. Did you go out the front door? Yes. And came directly into the street? Yes. Which way did you turn when you got out on the street? I turned to the right and north. Down. Downhill. Yes. And in going downhill, of course, you had to pass Mr. Borden's house. Yes, sir. Did you know Mr. Borden? Yes. Knew him to speak to as well as by sight. Did you see him that morning? Yes, sir. Won't you describe where he was when you first saw him? He was on the inside of his yard, coming round the house. From what direction? In the back of the house. East, I think. Where did he go then? To the front door. In going from the yard to the front door, did he go out onto the sidewalk, or did he go inside the fence? Inside the fence. What did you see him do at the front door? He stooped down, as though putting a key in the door. That is all. Did you see whether he had anything in his hand? A little white parcel, I think. Did you speak to him? No. Or he to you? No. Did he see you, do you think? I don't think so. Where did you go then? Down to the dentist's. This, to be certain about it, Mrs. Kelly, was when you were going out to go to the dentist's. Yes. And immediately after you had looked at your clock. Yes, sir. Mr. Moody completes the direct examination of the witness. Cross-examination of the witness by George Robinson of the defense. 
You started to go to the dentist, did you? Yes, sir. From your house? Down 2nd, yes. You were going northerly down 2nd Street, were you not? Yes. Which would carry you past the Borden house and then past Mrs. Churchill's house? Yes. And about where were you when you saw Mr. Borden passing around from the side of the house to the front door? I was near his gate. Which gate do you refer to? The front gate leading to the front door. But then you could almost put your hand on him, could you? Well, he was inside the fence. You were one side of the fence and he the other? Yes. And uh, you think he didn't see you? I don't think so. He knew you well? Well, I spoke to him when I met him. That is all. And he spoke to you when he met you? Yes, sir. There was no sort of variance or difficulty between you? Oh, no. A pleasant acquaintance. And uh, you can't conceive of any reason why he didn't speak to you, only he didn't see you? No, sir. Was he reading anything as he passed along? No, I think he had his eyes cast down, but he was not reading. Was he walking very briskly? No, usual gait. Which was about the usual gait for an old gentleman like him, I suppose? Yes. He wouldn't walk as spry as my friend Mr. Moody, would he? I don't know. And he came around the side of the house and walked up toward the front door? Yes. Didn't go out on the sidewalk? No, sir. Well, really, there was nothing between you and the fence and him? Yes. As a fact, you could have touched him, couldn't you? If I had tried, I think so. No doubt about it? I think so. Well, you didn't speak to him even if he didn't look up? No, sir. Were you alone? Yes, sir. Before you left the house, had you looked at the uh, timepiece in the kitchen? Yes, sir. That was a wooden clock? Yes. What year was it made? I, I couldn't tell you. A good many years ago. Before you were born? Oh, I think so. Was it your grandfather's clock? I don't know, I'm sure. It, it has been in the house as long as I can remember. Did you ever hear anybody say when that clock first ran? No. The clock had got tired, hadn't it? I shouldn't wonder. I don't know. You don't consider it very much of a clock at that time? No. And that was the only thing you had to fix the time by? Yes, sir. You did notice at that time who were passing on the street? No, I don't remember anyone. You didn't take any notice at all? No, sir. Do you remember a carriage that passed by there, an open buggy right at that time, and right against you? No, sir, I don't. And a couple of men in it? No, sir, I don't. Oh, that street is very wide. I know it, but I don't remember it. Do you remember any carriage or team passing you right at that place? No, sir, I don't. Going either way? Either way. It might have possibly, but I don't remember it. I didn't take notice. Then two or three might have passed you, and you might not have noticed them at all? Yes. Did you meet any people on the sidewalk there? I don't remember. And do you say you did not? I, I don't say I did not, no. You didn't take notice enough, so... But what if you had seen two or three men along there? You wouldn't think anything about it? No, I don't think so. And especially if they were across the street. Do you know where uh, Mr. Miller's house is across the street? Yes. And where Dr. Bowen's house is? Part of the same block? Yes. Or did you see anybody over there in front of that house? I didn't look. I don't remember. Did you pass down by Mr. Hall's stoop on the same side of the street as uh, Mr. Miller's house? I passed on the opposite side. Uh, did you notice anybody about there? No, sir. Really, then, the only moving thing that you noticed was Andrew J. Borden. All I can remember now. And you haven't been able since that day to remember anything else, have you? Well, I haven't thought of it. You know Mrs. Churchill's house quite well? Yes. Was there anybody on those steps when you went by? I don't remember anybody. I don't think there was. Did you glance into Mr. Borden's yard on the north side of the house as you passed along? No, sir. So as to see whether there was anybody at the outside door or not? No, sir. Were you in uh, somewhat of a hurry in going to the dentist? Yes, I was an hour late, an hour after my appointment. And then your clock was running wrong? Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson completes the cross-examination of the witness. Redirect examination of the witness by Mr. Moody of the prosecution. Perhaps this photograph may assist you in showing just where you were and just where Mr. Borden was when you first saw him. That is his front gate, you know, and I was above that. And where was he? I saw him come around the corner. I must have been... That is my house, you know. I, m I must have been... He would be at that side of the gate when I saw him come around this corner. He would be at... Where were you when he was at the door? I was about opposite his gate, as near as I can remember. Mr. Moody shows the witness a photograph of the Borden house. The locations indicated on the photograph were pointed out to the jury. Mr. Moody completes the redirect examination of the witness. Recross examination of the witness by Mr. Robinson. At which gate do you say now? 
Was it their front gate or their side gate? Their front door. Opposite the front door? When I saw him at the door, I was about opposite his gate, as near as I can remember. Let us see a moment. As he came around the corner of the house, his back wasn't towards you? Yes. He was stooping down. You met right there just as he was turning up to go up to the front door? Oh no, but as I passed his front gate, he was facing me. There was ample opportunity for him to see you if uh, he had been looking at you? Yes. And you certainly saw him all the time? Yes. So he was not back to you when uh, he had his opportunity to look, was he? No. Mr. Robinson completes the re-cross-examination of the witness. Prosecution witness Carolyn Kelly is excused. The direct examination of prosecution witness Bridget Sullivan is resumed by Mr. Moody of the prosecution. Previously sworn, Miss Sullivan takes the stand. At the time of the adjournment, you had told us about Mr. Borden's going into the backyard and unlocking the barn door. Yes, sir. Did he do anything else out in the yard besides unlock the door and empty the slops? Yes, sir. He brought in a basket of pears that he picked off the ground and brought them in. From the backyard, where did he go? Well, went to the yard, where the pear tree was. Oh, well, I mean, after he had picked the pears, what did he do? I brought them in the kitchen and left them on the table there. Did you notice how he left the door after he came in? Yes, he left it open. Did you remain in the kitchen? Yes, sir. Did you do anything at the door at the time Mr. Borden came in? I don't remember doing anything at the door. Perhaps I misled you. I mean, when he came in through the screen door, did he do anything to that? I don't know. I can't say whether he hawked it or not. You don't know whether he did or not? No, sir. After he put the pears down in the kitchen, what did he do or where did he go? He washed up in the kitchen and got ready for breakfast. Do you know where he then went after he had completed his washing? Breakfast. To breakfast? Yes, sir. Up to that time, had you seen anyone besides Mr. and Mrs. Borden up to the time when Mr. Borden went into his breakfast? No, sir. Not until I put the breakfast on the table and Mr. Morris sat down to breakfast. Where had he been up to that time? Of course, you, you can't tell. No, sir. Had he been in the kitchen at all where you were? I don't remember to see him. Now, will you tell us what there was for breakfast that morning? There was some mutton, some broth and johnny cakes, coffee and cookies. The broth was made of what? Mutton. It was mutton broth and the meat itself. Mutton? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recall anything else that there was for breakfast? No, sir. I don't remember anything else. Do you remember whether there was any fruit or not in the dining room? No, sir. I don't remember. I didn't put them on. What time about was it when they sat down to breakfast? Well, it might be quarter past. Can't exactly tell the time. Do you have any idea how long they were at their breakfast? No, sir. I've not. What were you doing while breakfast was going on? I was around the kitchen, cleaning up things and... I don't know exactly what I was doing. Had your ironing been completed the day before? Yes, sir. And the clothes put away? Yes, sir. You spoke of their being at breakfast. Who was at the breakfast? Mr. Borden, Mrs. Borden, and Mr. Morse. After the breakfast was completed, do you know where those three went, or either of them? Well, I guess they must go to the sitting room. The bell rang. I went in there, and there was nobody in the dining room. The bell from the table, do you mean? Yes, sir. Indicating that the breakfast had been completed? Yes, sir. And they had gone from the dining room at that time? Yes, sir. What did you do then? I sat down and had my breakfast. Did you have your breakfast in the dining room? Yes, sir. After you had completed your breakfast, what did you do? Cleared off the dishes, etc., and commenced to wash. Now, during that time, were you in any other room except the kitchen and dining room? No, sir. Except to go in the kitchen closet and put the things away, and so forth. Of course, I had to go there and the ice chest. The closet you speak of is the closet that leads right out of the kitchen. Yes, sir. The door opens from the kitchen itself. Yes, sir. After you had completed your breakfast, what did you do? Took the dishes out to the dining room and brought them out to the kitchen and began to wash them. Did you complete the washing of the dishes before anyone else appeared? No, sir. Who next appeared? The next thing I remember to see was Mr. Borden and Mr. Morse going out the back entry, the back door. Did Mr. Morse return after the two went out to the screen door? No, sir. He went out. Did Mr. Borden return at that time? Yes, sir. Were you in a position to see how Mr. Borden left the door after he let Mr. Morris out? No, sir. Couldn't tell how he left the door. While you were eating your breakfast in the dining room, how was the door between the dining room and the kitchen? Opened. When Mr. Borden returned from letting Mr. Morse out, where did he go? 
Where did Mr. Borden go? I came to the sink and cleaned his teeth in the sink. And after that, he took a bowl, a big bowl, and filled it with water and took it up to his room. Up to that time, had anyone else appeared up to the time that Mr. Borden went up to his room? I don't remember to see anybody. Do you know whether he took the key or not as he went up with the pitcher? Yes, sir. He had the key in his hand. Did you see where the key came from? He took it off the shelf in the setting room. After Mr. Borden went upstairs, did you continue to remain in the kitchen until someone else came, or did you go away? No, sir. I was washing the dishes at the sink when Miss Lizzie came through. About how long was it after Mr. Morris went that Miss Lizzie Borden came? I don't know how long it was. It was no more than five minutes. I don't think. I don't remember how the time was. When she came, into which room did she come? Where did you first see her? The kitchen. From what room did she come? From the setting room. What did she do? She came through the kitchen and left down the slop pail. When I asked her what did she want for breakfast, she said she didn't know if she wanted any breakfast, but she guessed she would have something. She would have some coffee and cookies. And what did you do after she said that? She got some coffee, got her cup and her saucer, and got some coffee. Then I went out into the backyard, and she was getting her own breakfast. Had she sat down before you went out to the backyard? Yes, sir. She was preparing, sitting down at the kitchen table. When you went out to the backyard, had Mr. Borden come down again? No, sir. I didn't see him. When you went out to the backyard, how did you find the screen door? I was hooked. Of course, you unhooked it and went out. Yes, sir. Leaving Miss Lizzie Borden in the kitchen. Yes, sir. What was the occasion of your going out that morning? I had a sick headache, and I was sick to my stomach. And did you go out to vomit? Yes, sir. Where did you go? I was in the backyard. Right in the yard, do you mean? Yes, sir. How long do you think you stayed out there, if you can give us any judgment of the time? I can't tell how long I was out there. Or maybe ten minutes. Maybe fifteen. Can't exactly tell the time. Uh, perhaps I can help. Did you do anything out there except to accomplish the purpose for which you went out? No, sir, I didn't. When you had completed that, where did you go? I came to the kitchen. As you returned to the kitchen, did you do anything with reference to the screen door? Yes, sir. I hooked it as I came in from the backyard. As you returned to the kitchen, who, if anyone, was there? I didn't see anybody. Did you see Mr. Borden again? No, sir. Did you see Mr. Borden again before you saw him at the front door later on in the morning? No, sir. I didn't see Mr. Borden since. I think he went up to his room with the water until he left the front door. Where he had gone in the meantime, you do not know. No, sir, I did not. I can't hear her now. No, sir. I don't know where he went to. So the last time you saw him was when he went upstairs with his pitcher and his key. Yes, sir. That was the last time I remember of. And that was before Miss Lizzie came down? Yes, sir. What did you go to do when you came back into the kitchen? I completed washing my dishes. Some of them was washed, all of them wasn't. And I finished them and took them into the dining room and got them completed and Mrs. Borden was there. You will have to speak a little louder. Mrs. Borden was in the dining room as I was fixing my dining room table. And she asked me if I had anything to do this morning. And I said, no, not particular, if she had anything to do for me. And she said she wanted me to get the windows washed. I asked her how, and she said, inside and outside both, they're awful dirty. What was she doing when you had that talk with her in the dining room? She was dusting. She had a feather duster in her hand, and she was dusting between the setting room and the dining room, the door. Do you recall whether she had any covering over her hair at that time? No, sir, I don't think she did. When after that did you see Mrs. Borden? don't remember to see her. I don't remember to see Mrs. Borden since before she came down to the kitchen. I don't think I've made myself clear to you. You have told us that in the dining room, after you finished your dishes, that she gave you some direction about washing the windows. Yes, sir. And that at that time she was dusting between the dining room and the sitting room. Yes, sir. Uh, Now I ask you, when next after that event did you see Mrs. Borden alive? I didn't see her anymore till I found her dead upstairs. At any time did you see Miss Lizzie Borden anywhere? No, sir. At the time you received this direction? No, sir, I don't remember to see her. Are you able to fix the time, or about the time, when you received this direction from Mrs. Borden, the last time you saw her alive? Can't exactly tell the time, but I know it was about nine o'clock. How long was it after Miss Lizzie Borden had come downstairs that you saw Mrs. Borden dusting between the two rooms? I don't know. It might be fifteen minutes. I can't tell the time, what time it was. I never noticed the clock. Although there was enough of them around. Oh, well, that that answers it. After you received this direction from her, where did you go and what did you begin to do? I was out in the kitchen. What were you doing in the kitchen? Oh, I was cleaning off my stove and putting things in their places and so forth. And when I got ready, I went down to the dining room and the setting room. 
and I left down the windows, which I was going to wash, and I went down cellar and got a pail for to take some water. Then, you say, you went into the dining room and sitting room and left down the windows? Yes. And what did you do to them exactly? Well, the windows was up. I left down the windows. Shut them up? Yes, sir. Did you shut the windows in both rooms? Yes, sir. There was a window up in both rooms. Were the curtains up or down in the rooms? There was no curtain, sir. Were the shutters closed or open? It was open at the bottom, I remember. Did you change their position at any time you shut the windows, the position of the shutters? No, sir. I don't think I did. Up to the time when you shut the windows on the outside in those two rooms, had you in any way closed the shutters of the dining room and the sitting room? No, sir. I don't think I did. When you went into the dining room and the sitting room to close the windows, did you see Miss Lizzie Borden there at all? No, sir. I didn't see anybody. From there, you said you went down cellar? Yes, sir. And what did you get down cellar? A wooden pail. Where did you go then? Came upstairs. In the kitchen closet, I found a brush which was to wash the windows with. Filled my pail with water in the sink and took it outdoors. As I was outside the back door, Lizzie Borden appeared in the back entry. And she says, Maggie, are you going to wash the windows? I says, yes. I said, you needn't lock the door. I'll be out around here. But you can lock it if you want to. I can get water in the barn. Did she make any reply to that? I don't know, sir. She didn't. Now, had you seen her between the time you left her in the kitchen eating her breakfast and the time she appeared at the screen door as you went out with your pail of water and brush? I don't remember to see her. Do you know what she did to the door? She didn't hook it. Do you know where she then went as you went outdoors? No, sir. I do not. You have said that going out with your pail and brush, you went to the barn. I went to the barn to get the handle for the brush. Where was that in the barn? It was in the barn, right in one of the stalls. On, of course, the first floor of the barn. Yes, sir. What did you then do? I went to wash the dining room windows. Did you wash the dining room windows first? No, sir. I washed the setting room first. And the sitting room windows were, I believe, on the south side of the house, the Kelly side. Yes, sir. And on the side away from the screen door. Yes, sir. While you were washing those windows, did you see the girl who worked in the Kelly house? Before I started to wash the windows, I had the water and the brush. Miss Kelly's girl appeared, and I was talking to her at the fence. How did you wash those windows, if you'll be kind enough to tell us? I washed them with the brush and water. That is, using a pail? Yes, sir. And a long-handled brush? Yes, sir. After you washed the windows on the south side of the house, the sitting room windows, in the way you have told, what, what did you next do? The parlor windows. While you were washing the sitting room windows, did you see anyone in the sitting room? No, sir. I don't remember to see anybody. How many windows on the front of the house of the parlor windows did you wash? Two. That is all there were? There are three windows in the parlor. But there are two in the front. Had you been to the parlor to do anything that morning? No, sir. Were the blinds of the parlor open or closed? Closed. To wash them, of course, you had to open the blinds. Yes, sir. Were the shutters in the parlor opened or closed? There was curtains for the inside of the parlor. And these curtains were how? I don't remember how they were. You don't remember whether the curtains were up or down? No, sir, I do not. After you washed the two front windows, where did you go? Between times I went to the barn and got some water. I washed the dining room windows on one side of the parlor window, one window on the other side of the house. The dining room. Now, where did you get your water from in washing these seven windows? In the barn, except the first pail I brought from the kitchen. How many times during the time you were washing the sitting room windows on the south side of the house did you go around to the barn to get your water? I could not tell how many times. Can you give us an idea? No, oh, sir. I went there to get water. I must go there twice anyway to get water to wash them the first time. Washing the first two windows I am speaking of now. Yes, sir. In going to the barn to get your water, how did you go? Did you go around the front of the house or around the rear of the house? I went around the rear of the house when I was on that side, and when I was on the front, I went beside the back door. That is, when washing the front part windows, you went by the screen door. Yes, sir. But when washing the sitting room windows, you did not go by the screen door. No, sir. Can you tell us how many times you went to the barn for water while washing the two front windows? No, I got six or seven pails. Can't tell the right number. Now, during all that time, did anyone come to the house that you saw? No, sir. Did not see anybody. When you came to washing the dining room windows, did you see anyone inside the dining room? No, sir. After you had completed washing your windows, what did you do? Went after I completed them with the brush, and I went and got the depper from the kitchen. And found the screen door, of course, unlocked. Yes, sir. I went and took a full dipper of water. I went to the barn and got some clean water and commenced to wash the setting room windows again by throwing water upon them. By taking the dipper and dashing the water upon them? Yes, sir. When you went into the kitchen to get your dipper, did you see anyone there? 
No, sir. Did you go into the kitchen more than once during the process of washing windows? No, sir. After you had washed the sitting room windows the way you have described, did you do anything to the other windows? Yes, sir. I went right around. Doing the same thing? Yes, sir. When you were completing this rinsing of the windows, if I may call it that, what did you do? I went into the kitchen, put the handle and the brush away in the barn, and brought the pail and the dipper in, and put the dipper behind, and got the hand basin, and went to the setting room to wash the setting room windows. Did you go to the barn to put away the handle of the brush before you went in or after? Before I went in. Before you went in? Yes, sir. Now, I think you have said you took the basin in there. Yes, sir. A hand dish in the sink. Uh, what else did you take? Step ladder in the kitchen. Anything else? No, sir. Except a cloth I had to wash with. When you came into the kitchen, after having put your brush handle in the barn, did you do anything to the screen door? I hooked it. After you had your washing materials, into which room did you first go? The satin room. I may ask you if you washed the inside of the parlor windows. No, sir. You did not go into the parlor, as I understand it. No, sir, I did not. Which window did you begin to wash in the inside? The next window, to the front door. In which room? In the satin room. How much had you done of that work before you heard something? Had the upper part of the window done. Done? Yes, sir. Had you seen anyone up to that time since you saw Lizzie at the screen door? No, sir, not that I remember. Will you describe what you heard which attracted your attention? Well, I heard, like, a person at the door. I was trying to unlock the door and push it, but could not. So I went to the front door and I unlocked it. Did you hear the ringing of any bell? No, sir. I don't remember to hear any bell. When you got to the front door, what did you find the condition of the locks there? I went to open it, caught it by the knob, the spring lock as usual, and it was locked. I unbolted it, and it was locked with the key. So that there were three locks? Yes, sir. And what did you do with reference to the lock and the key? I unlocked it. I unlocked it, and I said, oh, pshh, and Miss Lizzie laughed upstairs. Her father out there on the doorstep, she was upstairs. Upstairs? Could you tell whereabouts upstairs she was when she laughed? Well, she must have been either at the entry or the top of the stairs. I can't tell which. Was there any talk passed between you and Mr. Borden as he came to the door? No, sir. Not a word. I am reminded that one question was unanswered. How many locks on the front door were locked as you went there? Locks and bolts, I mean. There was a bolt, and there was a spring lock, and there was a key. And those were all locked? Yes, sir. During the morning hours, usually, was that door kept locked otherwise than by the spring lock? Well, I don't know anything about the door. I didn't have nothing to do with it. After you would let Mr. Borden in, where did you go? I went on washing my window. Into the sitting room? Yes, sir. Where did he go? And he came into the setting room and went into the dining room. Did you see whether he had anything or not? He had a little parcel in his hand. Same as paper or book. I can't tell what it was. Uh, speak a little louder, please. He had a parcel in his hand. Same as a paper or a book. Can't tell what it was. Did you see what Mr. Borden did when he went into the dining room? He sat down in the chair at the head of the lounge. And what did you continue to do? I was washing my windows. I went into the kitchen after something. And I see the man sitting on the lounge, in the chair at the head of the lounge. In the dining room? Yes, sir. Did anyone else appear at that time? Well, Miss Lizzie came down the stairs. Probably five minutes. I couldn't tell exactly the time. And she came down through the entry, the front entry. Into the dining room, and I suppose to her father. And in going to the dining room, did she have to go through the sitting room in which you were? Yes, sir. What did she say, if anything, to her father? I heard her ask her father if he had any mail, and they had some talk between them which I didn't understand or pay any attention to. And I heard her tell her father that Mrs. Borden had a note and had gone out. What is the next thing that happened? The next thing I remember, Mr. Borden went out in the kitchen and come in the kitchen door, come from the kitchen into the sitting room and took the key off the mantelpiece and went up the stairs to his room. What key was it that he took? The key to his bedroom door. And what stairs did he go up? The back stairs. What is the next thing that you did? Well, as Mr. Borden came down the stairs, I was completed in the sitting room, and taken my water, and taken the hand basin and the step ladder into the dining room. As I got there, he pulled a rocking chair and sat down in the rocking chair, near the window, and let the window down, as I had left it up when I got through. Sat in a rocking chair in which room? The satin room. And he sat down in the sitting room. What did you begin to do? I began to wash the dining room windows. At the time that he came down and you were passing from the sitting room to the dining room, was Miss Lizzie Borden there? I don't remember to see her. You began washing your two windows in the dining room, didn't you? Yes, sir. While you were washing those windows, did anyone appear in the dining room? Miss Lizzie. From what room did she appear? Through what door did she appear? She came in from the setting room into the dining room. Will you state what she did after she came in? She came into the dining room, went out in the kitchen, 
and took an ironing board and placed it on the dining room table and commenced to iron. You, in the meantime, washing the windows. I was washing the last window in the dining room. Did she say anything to you or you to her while you were doing that and she was doing what you describe? She said, Maggie, are you going out this afternoon? I said, I don't know. I might or I might not. I don't feel very well. She says, if you go out, be sure to lock the door. For Mrs. Borden has gone on a sick call and I might go out too. Says I, Miss Lizzie, who's sick? I don't know. She had a note this morning. Must be in town. Did you complete the washing of your two windows in the dining room? Yes, sir. I washed them before I got through with them. And in the meantime, did she go on ironing whatever she was ironing? Yes, sir. She got through and went out to the kitchen. What was she ironing? Handkerchiefs. And where were the flats that she was ironing with? In the stove. In the kitchen. Do you know anything of the condition of the fire at that time? No, sir. I couldn't tell how it was. You say you finished your washing of the windows and went into the kitchen? Yes, sir. What did you do in the kitchen? Washed out the cloths that I had washed in the windows and hung them behind the stove. As I got through, Miss Lizzie came out and said, There's a cheap sale of dress goods at Sargent's this afternoon at eight cents a yard. I don't know if she said this afternoon, but today, and I said, I'm going to have one. What did you do then? I went upstairs to my room. At that time, Miss Sullivan, had you seen or heard any other person about the premises, except those whom you have named? No, sir. I don't remember to hear a sound of anybody else. What did you do when you got to your bedroom? Went upstairs to my bedroom. When I got up in the bedroom, I laid in the bed. When is the first occasion that you had to notice the time after you got up into your bedroom? I heard the bells outdoors ring, the city hall bell, I suppose it was. And I looked at my clock, and it was eleven o'clock. My clock was in the room. Were you lying in bed at that time? Yes, sir. Had you become drowsy at all or anything of that sort? I don't remember. I know I wasn't drowsing or sleeping. Have you a judgment as to how long you were there between the time you reached your bed and the time that the city clock struck eleven? Well, I might be there. Of course, I can't tell. I didn't notice the time when I went up to my room. But by my judgment, I think it was three or four minutes. Did you get drowsy at all up to the time you were called? Didn't you go to sleep at all? I don't think I did. Up to the time when someone called you, did you hear any noise? No, sir. Don't remember to hear the sound of anybody. Did you hear any opening or closing of the screen door? No, sir. I did not. Are you able to hear the opening or closing of that screen door from your bedroom? Yes, sir. If anybody goes in or out and is careless and slams the door, I can hear it in my room. What is the next thing that occurred as you were lying upon the bed? Miss Lizzie hollered, Maggie, come down. I said, what's the matter? And she says, come down quick, father's dead. Somebody come in and killed him. Can you give me a judgment of how long that was after the clock struck 11? Well, it might be 10 or 15 minutes, about as far as I can judge. You had a clock, as you have told us, in your room. Yes, sir. Did you look at the clock? No, sir, I did not. What did you do? I run downstairs. Had you, by the way, changed any of your clothing? No, sir, I did not. Or taken off your shoes? No, sir. Or taken off any clothing at all? No, sir. What was the usual dress that Miss Lizzie Borden wore mornings? Will you describe it? Well, wait a moment. We object to that. Uh, Not as having any tendency to show what she had on that morning. I object. I don't care to press it against objection. Well, she wore a... Uh, Wait wait a a moment. moment. I will call your attention not asking you when it was worn or what part of the time it was worn, to a cotton or calico dress with light blue groundwork and a little figure. Does that bring to your mind the dress I am referring to? No, sir, it was not a calico dress she was in the habit of wearing. I did not ask you about the habit, but... That should be stricken out. Uh, Certainly. Let it be stricken out. Do you remember a dress of such a color with a figure in it? Yes, sir. Will you describe that dress I have referred to as well as you can? It was a blue dress with a sprig on it. What was the color of blue? What was the shade of blue? Light blue. And what was the color of what you have called the sprig on it? It was a darker blue, I think, than what the underpart was. Did it have any light spots or light figures in it? That is very leading now. I don't remember. I move that that be stricken out. I object. I contend that the question is not leading. I understand he does not propose to go any further with it. I do not. Well, we will have no talk about it now. Let it stand as it is. When did she procure that dress? Last spring, I guess. Do you know who made it? Yes, sir. Who? If you do not know of your own knowledge, I won't ask you. I know her, but I forget the lady's name. It is the name that you are hesitating about, is it? Yes, sir. Do you know where her place of business is? No, sir, I do not. Was it made at the house or made somewhere else? I think it was made at the house. 
Was it a dressmaker that she usually had, or some other dressmaker? Well, generally the same dressmaker's been there ever since I've been in the house. The same dressmaker that's always been there. Yes, sir. The same one that was always there made this dress that you describe. I can't tell who made the dress at all, but I know the dressmaker was there in the house dressmaking that spring. And she got that dress that spring. I can't tell who made it. Yes, I understand. There is a dress, Your Honor, which is not here at the present time that we intended to show the witness. I would like to reserve the privilege of doing so. It is here, but it is under lock and key. Professor Wood has the key with which it is locked up, and he is absent. When you heard this outcry, did you go downstairs? Yes, sir. Whom did you see when you first came downstairs? Miss Lizzie. Let me ask you, in this connection, if you're able to tell us what dress she had on that morning. No, sir. I couldn't tell what dress the girl had on. And you couldn't describe it? No, sir. I couldn't. Where was Miss Lizzie standing as you came down the back stairs? Standing at the back door. Standing at the door that was leading in. A wooden door. Was the door open or closed? The door was open. Was she in or outside upon the threshold? She was inside the threshold, as far as I can remember. You spoke of her standing with her back towards something. What was her back towards? Standing with her back to the screen door. I don't know if she leaned against the door or not. When you said the door was open, you meant the screen door, I suppose. No, sir. I meant the wooden door. The screen door was shut. Could you tell whether it was hooked as well as shut? No, sir. I couldn't tell whether it was hooked or not. Did you say anything to her at that time, or she to you? I went around to go right into the sitting room, and she says, Oh, Maggie, don't go in. I've got to have a doctor, quick. Go over, I've got to have a doctor. So I went over to Dr. Bowen's right away. And when I came back, I says, Miss Lizzie, where are you? I says, Didn't leave the screen door hooked. She says, I was out in the backyard and heard a groan. And when I came in, the screen door was wide open. Did you have anything more said between you at that time? No, sir. Not at that time. She wanted to know if I knew where Miss Russell lived, and I says yes. And she says, go and get her. Can't be alone in the house. So I stepped inside the entry and got a hat and a shawl that was hanging inside the entry and went down to Miss Russell. Had any outcry or alarm been given at that time to the neighbours? No, sir. Where did you first go to get Miss Russell? Went in the corner house, the corner of 2nd and Bourne Street. It is suggested you didn't tell us whether you found Dr. Bowen or not. No, sir, I did not. His wife came to the door, and I told her that Mr. Borden was dead. I think that's what I told her. And she said the doctor wasn't in, but she was expecting him along any time, and she said she would send him over. Now you were about describing to us the house where you first went to get Miss Russell. I went in the house in the corner of 2nd and Borden Street. Did you find anyone there? I found a woman, and I asked her if... Never mind that. You learned that Miss Russell was not there. Yes, she was not there. Where did you go then? I went out, and on the corner I met a man which Mrs. Churchill sent looking for a doctor, I guess. And I asked him... Uh, One moment, uh... Please do not repeat that. Where did you go? Uh, You learned where Miss Russell lived from someone else. Yes, sir. Where did you go? She lived on Borden Street. In the little cottage house next to the baker shop. Yes, sir. How far did you go before you found her? Can't tell how long it was. Well, was Miss Russell there then? Yes, I saw Miss Russell at the screen door as I came to the door. She appeared in the door and I told her. She appeared at the door as you approached the door? Yes, sir. And after some conversation with her, did you go away? Yes, sir. I went back home. Uh, Where did you go to? I went to the house where I left. And now going back a moment, in going over to Dr. Bowen's and returning, did you go rapidly or slowly or or how? I don't know. I guess I ran. I don't know whether I did or not, but I guess I went as fast as I could. When you returned to the house, uh, by what door did you enter? The back door. The screen door, as we call it. Yes, sir. Who had got there then, if anyone? When I come from Miss Russell's? Uh, Yes. Mrs. Churchill was in, and Dr. Bowen. Was anyone else there at the time except Mrs. Churchill and Dr. Bowen? No, sir, and Miss Lizzie. Where were they when you returned from your errand in seeking Miss Russell? I think Miss Lizzie was in the kitchen with Mrs. Churchill. Mrs. Churchill and I went into the dining room, and Dr. Bowen came out from the sitting room and said, He is murdered. He is murdered. What happened then? Oh, I says, Lizzie, if I knew where Mrs. Whitehead was, I would go and see if Mrs. Borden was there, and tell her that Mr. Borden is very sick. And she says, Maggie, I'm almost positive I heard her coming back in. Won't you go upstairs and see? And I said, I'm not going upstairs alone. Before that time that she had said that, had you been upstairs? No, sir. I've been upstairs after sheets for Dr. Bowen. Into whose room? Into Mrs. Borden's room, and into the little room where he kept the safe. What led you to go upstairs into Mrs. Borden's room? Describe all that was done and said. Dr. Bowen wanted a sheet, and I said, I guess the sheets were up in Mrs. Borden's room, Mrs. Borden's desk where she kept the bedclothes, and he wanted the keys. 
and I asked Dr. Bowen if he would get the keys off the shelf in the setting room, and he did so, and Miss Russell said she would do anything to help me. She went in and unlocked the door and got the two sheets, I guess. Was it Miss Russell or Miss Churchill? Mrs. Churchill. When you went up with the key from Dr. Bowen from the sitting room, did you find the entrance to Mrs. Borden's sleeping room locked or unlocked? Locked. When you returned with the sheets, did you lock the door? Yes, sir. It was after that then that the conversation about going over to Mrs. Whitehead's occurred. Yes, sir. Uh, Won't you state that again? I didn't quite hear it. You said, uh, I says, Lizzie, if I knew, uh, now upon your return, what was said? I said, Miss Lizzie, if I knew where Mrs. Whitehead was, I would go and see if Mrs. Borden is there. And she says, Maggie, I'm almost positive I heard her coming in. She said, I'm sure she's upstairs. I said, I'm not going up again. Who is Mrs. Whitehead? Mrs. Borden's sister. Who lived in Fall River. Yes, sir. In consequence of what was said to you, what was said or done? Mrs. Churchill said she would go with me. Went from the dining room, and into the sitting room, and upstairs. Describe what you saw as you went upstairs. As I went upstairs, I saw the body under the bed, ran right into the room, and stood at the foot of the bed. How far upstairs did you go before you saw the body? I don't remember how far. I remember to see the woman's clothing. What? I don't remember how far up I went, because I went far enough to see. The woman's clothing, you were saying? Right between the bed and the wall. The bed was high enough to see. I went right into the room and stood at the foot of the bed. Was the door leading into the chamber where Mrs. Borden was found dead open or closed as you came up the stairway? Open. Do you recall anything about the curtains or shutters in that room at that time? No, sir. I could not tell how they were. Can you tell anything about how light it was in that room at that time? No, sir. Could not tell. I did not stay long enough to notice anything. Did you stop to make any examination of Mrs. Borden at that time to see what the matter was with her? No, sir, I did not. What did you then do? Came downstairs. Did Mrs. Churchill go into the room with you? No, sir. When you came downstairs, what occurred? When I came downstairs, Miss Lizzie was in the dining room, laying on the lounge with Miss Russell. Can you tell anything else that was done or said before you came down after having found this second dead body? No, sir, I cannot say. But I asked if I would go over and tell Mrs. Bowen to come over. I went over and told Miss Bowen, rung the front doorbell, and told her that Mrs. Borden was dead, and they wanted her to come over. That was another time you went to Dr. Bowen's house? Yes, sir. After you found Mrs. Borden dead? Yes, sir. While you were speaking to Mrs. Bowen the second time you went to the house, did you see anyone else? Uh, did anyone else come there? To Mrs. Bowen's? Yes, or the adjoining door. Mr. Miller spoke to me and wanted to know what was the matter. Oh, I don't care what he said. Mr. Miller spoke to me. That was all, I guess. Do you recall anything else that Miss Borden said to you with reference to her whereabouts after you went up the stairs? No, sir. I do not remember. I don't know that you made it quite clear what Miss Lizzie Borden was doing as you went upstairs. To my room, do you mean? Yes, to your own room. She was in the dining room, turned in, and she went into the dining room and I went upstairs. Had she stopped ironing at that time? No, sir. Up to the time when Miss Lizzie Borden told her father and told you in reference to the note... Had you heard anything about it from anyone? No, sir, I never did. Let me ask you if anyone, to your knowledge, came to the house on the morning of August 4th with a message or a note for Mrs. Borden. On that day? Yes. No, sir. I've never seen nobody. Will you state it again? I would say there is some difference of recollection between my associate and myself, and I should like that statement repeated. I think there is great objection to repeating testimony simply because counsel do not remember... The testimony may be read from the minutes. I will not ask the question. Have you stated all that she said to her father about Mrs. Borden's absence? Yes, sir. Do you recall whether anything was said about a note? She told her father her mother had a note and had gone out. That has already been gone into. That is my recollection, but my associate... It is my recollection that this has been gone into. I ask then that the answer just given be stricken out. The last answer may be stricken out. Was anything in that conversation with the father said about a sick person? No, sir. She had a note and gone out. Was not here anymore. I neglected to ask you whether Miss Emma Borden was absent. Yes, sir. On the day of these homicides? Yes, sir. How long had she been away? I think she was two weeks. Cannot tell exactly. I suppose you only know from information where she was. No, sir. Do not know where she was. Did you see some officers about the premises the day after the murder, after the homicides? Yes, sir. Do you know which officers they were? I know them now, but I did not know them then. Do you know now which officers they were? Officer Daughtry was there, and the assistant marshal, 
Officer Medley, I guess. Anyone else that occurs to you? I don't remember. Did you go into the front part or the rear part of the house with the officers? No, sir. I did not. I went up the stairs to Miss Borden's room, up to my own room, and then to three other rooms in the first story. My question was, did you go up into the front part of the house at all with them? Not with the officers. Had you ever seen a hatchet with a broken handle about the premises? No, sir. I did not see any hatchet. I had no occasion to see any of them. A hatchet with the handle broken off close to the blade of the hatchet. Had you ever seen such a thing? No, sir. I did not. Who did the cutting of the wood? The man on the farm. Do you remember what his name was? His first name was Alfred. I don't know his last name. How often did he come to do it? I think he cut it over on the farm and brought it over to split it small. Some of it down cellar. Did you have anything to do with the cutting or chopping of the wood at all? No, sir, I did not. You used it just as it was prepared for you? Yes, sir, I did. On the day before, on Wednesday, did you see Lizzie Borden at any time during the day? Yes, sir. She was down to her breakfast and down to her dinner. Did you see her between those times? I don't remember. I know she came down before the dinner was put on the table Wednesday. Were you in the habit of tending to the bell calls at the front door? Yes, sir. When well, Mr. Borden and Mrs. Borden was not at home, but when they were in the sitting room, I did not go to the door. At any time when you answered the bell call, did you find the door locked in the way you described this morning? Now, wait a moment. I object to that. It has been suggested that it may appear hereafter on the testimony of Miss Lizzie Borden that it was her habit to unlock the door in the morning and leave the door on the spring lock only. I suppose that is not now before the court. We exclude it. Uh, the witness is yours, unless something has escaped us. I tried very hard that there should be nothing. Mr. Moody completes the direct examination of the witness. The Lizzie Borden Trial, Day 3, featured Mark Penny as Hosea Knowlton, Kevin Morrison as Chief Justice Mason, Keith Morrison as William H. Moody, Christine Daniels as George Robinson, Jen Tubbard, as Bridget Sullivan, Adrian Collins as Carolyn Kelly. This production was produced by Lion's Den Theatre. For more information about Lion's Den, find us at facebook.com slash Lion's Den Theatre or Twitter at Lion's Den Theatre. Or feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your Day 3 announcer, Allie House. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay safe.